Good morning. My name's Alison Ray and I'm a firm mix consultant. I started my business building independence and skills in the kitchen to be able to help people enjoy life gain independence with the firm mix. Today I'm going to demonstrate a delivery briefing for those who purchase the TM6. So when your, your TM6 arrives at the moment due to COVID-19, everything is being delivered directly to you. Previously, the Cermix would arrive at my house. I would organise a time with you to deliver Cermix and conduct a delivery briefing. Um, the delivery briefing was a great safety briefing because we ran through all the functions and safety um, questions about Cermix and I was able to answer any Cermix questions to ensure that you understood your Cermix and were able to use it safely. So when your Cermix arrives, there is an unboxing video, which I will... I usually send in an email. If you don't receive my email with the unboxing video and links, please let me know as sometimes I do get distracted with kids and life and forget to send it. But it is a great start to teach you and help you to know what to do when your Thermomix arrives. All right. So once your Thermomix arrives, you will um, basically set it all up. You will find in the box, you will find the Varoma. So you have three parts of the Varoma. You have the Varoma basket the Varoma tray, and then the Varoma lid. All of these are designed and when used on top of our Thermix bowl. It's not attached, but it sits in fairly securely in the lid like that. So the Varoma is great for steaming, yogurts. I actually do have a list that I found this morning that has all different Varoma recipes and where to find them in the different cookbooks. So Later on, I intend to be able to upload that onto my page. So those that are wanting more experience and to see how they can use the Varoma have that handy list. So we'll just put our Varoma aside for now. You will find you get a lid and you also get your measuring cup. The new lid for the TM6 has been designed so it actually fits in and is attached to your lid. You can see on the bottom it's got two little arms that lock in and then there are steam vent holes so any steam can come out. If you lose your lid, you can buy more through the mix shop. This lid is also compatible with anyone who has a TM5 or TM31 version that wants to upgrade their lid so it stays, or their measuring cup so it stays in rather than having the plastic cup. You also receive your splash guard. When using your splash guard, it's usually for high heat recipes. It sits on top of our lid like that, and when we turn it on, it actually locks in as well with our locking arms. So that's your splash guard. Again, it's for high heat functions. If you lose it or damage it, need a new one, you can buy them from the mix shop. With the measuring cup, when you sit it in, you'll notice it's got a little point at the front. We point it in that way and then lift it out, it comes out a lot easier. If it's in the other way, it can be a bit tighter to lose. So to get it out easier, hit the point to the front where your handle is and lift it out. If doing any high heat cooking, there's a little thumb indentation in the lid, put your finger there, hold it, tip your lid forward, then all your steam escapes out the back so you are not going to burn your face or give yourself a facial. Again, you'll get your measuring, um, not your measuring, your spatula. So it's got a protective guard. So if you're asked to add your spatula into the thermix while you're cooking, the spatula doesn't actually go in so it's not going to hit the blaze. It will sit there. So again, it acts as sort of a barrier so nothing will splash out, but your Thermix spatula can't go in too far, damaging the blades or plastic. You have your Thermomix butterfly. Thermix butterfly only goes to speed four. When you want to insert, oh, spare lid. When you want to insert your butterfly, you'll notice the blades. We've got a high blade and a low blade. The butterfly sits in. Um, hopefully you can see that, sits in behind the blade and then twists forward and now it's locked in place. So hopefully you can see that on there that the butterfly is behind those high blades. If you're inserting it without food it's certainly a lot easier. If you've got to insert it part way through a recipe, clear the, blade, clear the um, knob and as much around the blade so then you can sit it in and then twist it forward so it locks into place and then it will pull out. You then also have your steamer basket. So the TM6 is now designed with the lid on the steamer basket so that it can't be overflowed. You'll notice at the top of the steamer basket there's a small circle and if you get your spatula, it actually sits into that groove. So now your spatula is your lid for your measuring basket 
you can flip it forward and be able to turn it and again take it out of your bowl with ease without burning yourself. So that is the accessories that come with your thermix. To undo the bowl. Can you, there's a little triangle on the TM um, six bowls. If we look underneath, you can also see that it's got green. So the blade has got, got some green on it as well as the measuring bowl. So these are additional safety features that have been created with the TM six bowl. So to undo our base, when it's locked like that, basically hold it, twist to in a clockwise direction. Your base will fall off. Again, you can see the green on our base. So you'll note it's easy to notice the difference between a TM5 bowl or base blade and lid and the six. Again, the six blade has also got the green seal and green on the bottom. The measure the bowl also has our green lug to make sure it's all locked in place. So the TM6 bowl can't actually sit in without it being attached properly. So this is a great new safety feature that's been done. So the chance of being able to get liquid in your bowl without it being attached is very rare. Keeping your blades dry is extremely important because your blades actually go into this part of the server mix and that's going into the motor. So you don't want to be introducing any water or moisture into the motor. At the back, you'll notice there's also a little drain hole. This is if anything, if anything was to happen and your dish was to overflow, all water drains out through the back. So to put our bowl back together, simply insert our blade in. It will only sort of fit in one way. We'll get our base, hopefully we can do it this way, put the lid on, hold it here, and then it's simply twisting it back into place. And you'll notice it clicks. Then it sits in our base. To remove your jug, you need to lift straight up. It won't pull forward. Once it's up and clear, you can then pull it forward. Um, so again, it's designed that it is firmly stuck in place. Turning your thermix on, you'll come to the screen which has a timer, a temperature and speed. Whenever doing any manual cooking, we always go left to right. So we set our time first, then we set our temperature, and then we set our blade. To set our time, we simply turn our silver knob up and down. Being in touch screen, we click on our next button. We can adjust our temperature. You will notice on the TM6, we have 120, and then we have Varoma. It also, in our settings, has a high heat function. So to get to our functions on the TM6, simply scroll to the left, and then you will come up with your functions. So you've got scales, dough, turbo, pre-clean, kettle, blend, slow cooker, sous vide, fermentation, rice mode. Scrolling to the left, you have your thicker mode. So the TM6 has the opportunity and availability for additional modes to be added to increase the features and way we cook with our thermix. If I finish with the modes, a lot of the recipes that have been updated will take you and suggest that like if you're making custard or holiday sauce, when you get to the step for cooking, it will automatically come up with the thicken icon instead of having you set it for a certain time and speed. To go back to our home page, it's simple as pressing the little home button at the top. If we scroll to our right, this is our access or live access to Cookie Do. Um, so from here, your Cookie Do account can be linked to your phone, your laptop. I recommend that families use the same Cookie Do account for all members and then everyone's connected to the same account because you can create your own options. So we can search using our screen, our iPad or um, whatever device we're using. We have the choice of going to recipes or collections. Collections is all the cookbooks that we have available on Cookie Do. So in Australia, we have 114 cookbooks. If we change our filters, so all these cookbooks you can access through your Cookie Do account. You also have all the individual recipes. If we click on the left here on our filters, we can filter by starters, we can search by ingredients. So if you have something in your cupboard that you want to use, such as zucchini, you can actually just search with zucchini. You can search for tags. So if you want uh, gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, you can add it in tags. You can select the difficulty of your menu. The next two things, preparation total time, I absolutely love. 
if you're limited for time and want to cook something for the family, you can actually go, all right, I want something that takes under 30 minutes total time. That means your preparation and cooking time will be under 30 minutes. Again, you can also select the portions depending on the size of your family. If you want leftovers, you can have select bigger sizes. This is more if you're trying to, I guess, filter and only want specific things that will do with your family. So if you're having a large gathering, you might want to go over eight so that you've only got recipes coming up that have more than eight. Cookie Do now has the option to rate recipes, so you'll have your star rating. You can select the Thermix mod version depending on which Thermomix you own, or you can just leave it. Then you also have the choice of language. Always recommend select English, and then when you come down to your country, remove Australia. By selecting English, you will notice our recipes went from about 2,500 to 7,500. English recipes include basically recipes from Australia, Canada, UK, and USA. If you do um, speak another language or read another language, you can certainly go into Spain and get your Spanish recipes, or you can have them in Malaysian, Austrian. You can certainly have them in other languages. So that's how we search with our filters. Then we can click on show results. Um, and it's bringing up all our results. So again, if I want to change to collections, you'll now notice that there are 4,065 cookbooks that are in English. So it's instead of just having Australian cookbooks, it's, it's brought, actually no, I think this has brought up all cookbooks because having a look at some of these titles, they are not in English. But that's the easiest way to search. Then we go back to home. So scroll to the left is cookie do. So go back to home. Now we'll go into our settings. So you'll notice cookie do allows you to have my recipes. So you can bookmark recipes and it'll bring up different things you have bookmarked. You can create your own collections. So creating collections are great for families. Each person can have their own collection. You can divide it up into bread, cheese, Basically, whatever category you want to create it, you can, or every whatever category you would like to create, you can create, and then you have your own um, searchable file. So in stock paste, I've got the different stock paste that I can make: the chicken stock, meat stock, mushroom stock, veggie stock. Um, so it's endless amount of correct collections you can create. You can also go into save collections. Save collections are all the cookbooks that I've downloaded and saved. So instead of searching through the, all the cookbooks, I can go to ones that I've liked and saved. And then within the cookbook, it comes up with different recipes. If there's a particular recipe like the Anzac biscuits that I really like, I can then save it to my folder. So it gives us our instructions. It tells us our ingredients, preparation, nutrition, any utensils required, and hints and tips. Once we're in the recipe, if we have gone start cooking, the next button lines up. So there's a green button to help show you where you go next. It tells you everything from preheating ovens to lining baking trays. If you get stuck in a recipe and not sure what you need to do, three little dots. You can go into your recipe details. You can go into your scales if you need to add something quickly, or you can cancel the recipe. So recipe detail brings us back to the continue and the beginning, and we can access all the details to see what step we are. If you need a particular step because you've made some of it, you can actually click on, click on that step number you're at. So we can go, instead of having to scroll through the recipe, we can actually click on the number and go, all right, well, I want to get into step three. Um, so that was my recipes. Then you have My Week. My Week is a great meal planning, menu prep tool. But I've got nothing planned for today because I haven't been that organised. Um, is it going to let me go into the menu? So it lets you bring up your menu. So you can plan as far in advance as you like. You can put the different things that you want to cook in. Once you go to the menu, you can add it to a shopping list. So this is great to be able to create a shopping list of things you need. You can move it to another day or you can remove it. If we add it to our shopping list, it will then sync with our Cookie Do app on our phone or iPad and you can go into your shopping list and remove any items you already have and leave what you need. That shopping list you are able to then share with other family, friend, friends who are doing your shopping for you or print it so you know what you need to do at the shops. The thing I really love about the Cookie Do app and the recipe, it's helping you eat better 
and shop smarter because it's designed in the aisles for a Coles or Woolly shop and it's taking you around the outside of the shop. So through your fresh fresh fruit and veg, your meats, your dairy and your pantry staples. It's a mo- removing a lot of the tempting aisles in the, the middle of the shopping centre that have all your sweets and your treats, things that are containing a lot of art- artificial colourings, flavours, preservatives, additives. You're not having to go through and buy those. So it's great if you're shopping with kids because you don't have to go through those aisles and go, I want this and I want this. You don't have to necessarily say, no, you can just completely avoid it. So that is your week. Uh, now if we go oh, back, you'll notice suit little green button. This is great. So if you're partway through a recipe, that it will recognise it and bookmark it for you. So you can simply go straight back into your recipe. But we're going back to our settings. Recently cooked. This is great because it will bring up everything you've recently cooked. So if you know you've cooked something recently, you can just go through recently cooked and go, all right, I want to make that again. Um, so you can see there's a fair bit of variety in there. Some of it I've made, some of it I haven't. Settings. This is the important section. When we set up our Cookie Do account, it's really important that you set up from an iPad or a laptop, not your phone, because you want to go in and make sure you select and join Cookie Do Australia. Because when we come into setting up our Thermix, it asks for our country or region. If you've set up Cookie Do in the USA or UK by mistake, you have to set your machine to that. Otherwise, they won't actually sync together. So making sure Cookie Do is set up initially in the right country is great. Again, you can select your language. So if English isn't your native language, you can certainly select any other language and that's how your machine will present in that language for you. Selecting our country, it's, as I said, the smart connected device. So we can connect it to your Wi-Fi. If you don't have Wi-Fi, you can certainly hotspot the Thermix. It doesn't necessarily need to be connected because you can download your recipes and once you've synced it once, your recipes will stay there so you don't need to be accessing Wi-Fi all the time. It then comes into your Cookie Do account. So it will tell you what your membership type is, your membership status, when it's valid, email, and when you last um, synchronised it. Next, we go into our sounds. This is great because depending on your, I guess, hearing sensitivities, you can determine how loud the fish, finish sound want, want it to be. So the fishing, fish, uh, sorry, finishing sound is when you can play each step. So you can have it really loud, medium or low. I tend to prefer on medium. You can also set your duration from one to unlimited. I usually find that 30 seconds duration is enough to get your attention to say the step is finished. If it is unlimited or you're there with your machine, simply pressing our silver dial will get you out of the recipe and stop it. You can change your melody. So if you don't like the standard sound, you can go in and certainly change the sound for your ringtone button. Again, your next button, depending on how you are, you can change the sound of that. So anyone who's vision impaired or struggles hearing, being able to hear that sound to say it's gone next is really, really important and makes cooking really easy. Again, we can go into our display. We can select the brightness of our display to make the screen easier to read. Next, we have transportation mode. Transportation mode is really important if you are taking your Thermomix anywhere, if it's leaving your house, going in the car. Transportation mode basically locks everything in your thermix, the lid <coughs> and the bowl in place, which then protects your scales. That's as simple as going activate. You can see it's locked everything in. Then we hold down our silver button, which is our control device to be able to turn it off. We don't need to lock it at the moment, so I'll just go deactivate. You have the choice of system of measurement. So you've got the choice of, it's got the inbuilt scales which are in the one gram inference. You can choose between metric scales or imperial. I tend to leave it on metric because most of my manual cooking will be ma- will be metric. But if I do have a recipe that I'm using from a cookbook or from recipe, recipe community or somewhere like that, that is in imperial, I can simply select imperial and my scales will do, default to imperial. So I don't need to um, change it. So I'll go show what you might have been doing with the imperial. So now we're going to scale. So it's actually going to weigh in ounces for me. So I don't need to convert ounces to grams. So that is really, really handy. Um, So I'll just change it back to metric. 
If you are doing a guided cooking recipe, though, guided cooking will automatically detect where the recipes come from, whether or not it's an American recipe and in ounces, and it will automatically adjust the scales without you having to do it manually. Then you've got your privacy, Thermix version upgrade. Again, this is an important screen. If you've got any issues with your Thermix, it's got your serial number, your MAC address, cookie do ID, and your version. Again, you can press the search for update button and it will search and let you know if there are any updates. It's saying our software is up to date. Next is a factory reset. So if there are any problems with the Thermix, you can do a factory upset, factory reset. I certainly suggest you get in contact with me or your consultant if you are looking at doing a factory reset because it will remove all your cookie do history from your machine as well. So that's going through pretty much all our settings. Again, if you need help, you can go through here. If you've got someone using your Thermix for the first time and when you set it up, the safety instructions will always come up. If your machine is turned off inappropriately, whether it's just turned off at the power point or it has an unexpected shutdown, the safety instructions will come back up. So there's 10 safety instructions explaining what to do. It's really important to read them and understand them. Um, if there is an issue during cooking, simply press the silver button and things will stop. Um, only use genuine accessories. As I said here, it's showing you how to use a splash guard so things don't splash out if you're doing high heat and cooking onions. Um, not putting it near a hot surface. So having it on a flat kitchen bench is best. If you can have it further back is good and never leave it unattended, especially if you're using dough mode because it can have a bit of a rattle. Um, not overfilling the bowl Mommy. is really important. We've just been joined for Logan. I've just been joined from Logan. Um, he's my three-year-old. For those who haven't met him, he loves to help cook and come and join us. Um, in the bowl, you'll notice again, it has a maximum measure of 2.2 litres. So don't overfill it with liquids. Whenever making guided recipes, I always recommend you stick to the recipe. Don't try doubling ingredients until you've at least made it once or twice to understand how the volume impacts in the bowl, um, making sure the settings are all and your bowl is put together properly is really important as well. Um, mommy, you, you have the mommy, I don't know my toys. Oh, we'll find that in a minute. So, you'll notice it's got the green safety light when the bowl is hot, these change to red. So, you know that the bowl is hot, especially this favorite part of the bowl. You have your ergonomic handle to be able to grab. If you're having to pour things over, hold it. I want to hot. Oh, the bowl's not hot at the moment, so that's what happens when it's hot. Um, so there's the lid. Again, Mommy, using the Verona handles, use the handle. Um, use the Verona handles, which is here. So lifting the Verona off with the handles so that you don't burn yourself because, as I said, the plastic can be quite hot because it has been... Thing. Um, again, it comes with the safety instructions. It's a good idea, to, good idea to read them. If you do have any questions, please ask me or your consultant, and then it will come to the end. If you need to contact so mix their details are in the um, contact section, and then your instruction manual is also uploaded to your Thermix. So if you do lose or misplace your hard copy, You've got everything available here to be able to go through and access. Um, the first thing that we usually cook when we do a delivery is I like to try and make the veggie stock with you so we can check that your firm mix is working. At minimum, if we're not going to be cooking veggie stock, we need to confirm that our scales are working. The scales of the firm mix are actually in the bottom on our silver, not sure if you can see, the silver feet. That's our scale. So it's important that we don't drag our thermix. We always lift it up. Otherwise, we can damage our scales. So first thing to do is check our scales. It's a great idea to use your measuring cup because it's usually got a consistent weight. It should be between 80 and 85 grams. Set it to zero, and then we'll put it on. So my measuring cup is 83 grams. So this way I know my scales are working. The second thing to do is we do a kettle hot water test. So we want to make sure that the kettle function is able to heat up in a reasonable time. 
um, as I said, I would pr I prefer that when you do purchase the mix, especially if you've purchased through me, that when it arrives, you do contact me so we can set it up and go through the safety and delivery properly to ensure that you understand everything. Um, as I would hate to have you getting hurt or someone in your family being hurt because we haven't gone through the safety properly or you misunderstood something. Um, as I said, the butterfly only goes at speed four. If it goes higher, you are likely to disintegrate the butterfly and end up with plastic through your dish. It does say on the butterfly maximum speed four, and whenever you've got a recipe with it in there, it will say to maximum speed four. So please don't try and adjust the speed above speed four, otherwise you're likely to cause injuries. Um, so yeah, I so said the scales for the TM6 come in one grand increment, so it is really handy and allows you to be a lot more accurate. So if you go over a little bit, you're only going over by a few grams rather than five to ten grams. Um, I said it has a nice big screen, which is 15.2 centimetres by 20.3 centimetres. I said I find the screen a lot easier to use because it's simple swiping and the buttons are a lot, a lot more simplified. Um, again, the recipes are nice and broken down. It's guided. If we're using things, it's color-coded. Our next button is also color-coded, so it's easy if you do have a visual impairment to be able to see exactly what you need to do. Next, again, it's got simple instructions saying, all right, we add our measuring cup. It's above, straight into our lid. So it's telling us what we need to do when we do it. This is an example of the guide of cooking. It set up our time first, our so it set up our time, our temperature, and our speed. You'll notice the speed bar is green, and there has a little green arrow letting you go to. So at the bottom it says speed two, but you've also got the visual marker saying where you've got to turn it to. Um, if it doesn't require the lid, again, it's saying to scrape down the spatula. With your spatula, always find that when you're scraping, if you go in a clockwise direction, it helps protect your spatula because you're going on the blunt side of the blade. Then you push down and then scrape behind the blunt side of the blade to try and clear it. Um, what else is there? Um, so again, with the guide, it's telling you what we need to do with our cooking. I think we've pretty much covered everything that we need to do for the CM six delivery now but if you have any questions please ask I'm more than happy to help it's part of my role as being a consultant to help teach you how to use a thermomix and ensure you get the best out of it as I said it is an investment and I want to make sure if you've come through me and given me your business to buy thermomix that you fully understand how you can use your machine to the best um, standard so you don't have any regrets because I would hate you to have any regrets on the investment that you have made. As I said, I'm available by phone, by email, by messenger. Um, I do have my page on Facebook, which I would love you to come and join and follow and support. Um, invite your friends along. If you've got any questions, please ask. There isn't a silly question when it comes to Thermomix. Um, so I would rather you ask the question thinking that that's something silly, I don't need to ask that. Because um, I'd rather you know that you're using machine. If you're doing a manual recipe, I think it's probably the only other thing we haven't got, simply touching the blade symbol underneath our speed lets us turn it into reverse mode. So again, simple touching, their blades are going forward so it'll chop mix. In reverse, it will just spin without chopping. Uh, if we need to search for something, we've got our search bar up the top. And then it's take us into Cookie Doo to be able to search. So searching Cookie Doo, I can go straight away, go, all right, I've got zucchini. I want to use and it brings up zucchini. So now it's given me 107 results of things I can make with zucchini. Again, I like the TM6 screen, it's a lot bigger. It's giving me three choices per screen. So I've got a nice big picture of what I'm making as well as its description, its rating, and how long it takes. So I'm able to easily go in and go, all right, well, I need something that's quick and easy. Um, and I can just select it rather than having it all listed in an alphabetical order, which is on the TM5, and there isn't the search function on the TM5 to be able to search through recipes. If there's something I enjoy, I can click on, click on the three dots, which means I can then add it straight away to cooking today. I can bookmark or I can add it to my shopping list. My shopping list comes up on my app on my phone. 
um, it's not able to be accessed on the Thermix, but you're not really going to be taking your Thermix shopping. So you don't need the shopping list necessarily on the Thermix, but you do have it on your app, which you can share, um, which makes it easy to be able to meal plan and save money because you're only buying ingredients that you need um, to get. If there's more, simple pressing, load more. And again, each time it brings up about three choices. So it's not overwhelming with a number of choices. You can scroll down and each time you've got three at a time. If you want to change that, you can simply click on your filters <coughs> and change your category. So if I know I'm wanting to make a something for a, a, like a baking, um, I can just go baking sweet, baking savoury. Baking savoury. So now it's reduced my results to 13 with baking recipes using zucchini. So again, I can go, all right, I want to bake something. I've got a lot less choice. So it makes it a lot easier. It's not as overwhelming with having hundreds of choices. You can actually look at the picture and go, that looks quite good. Um, and most of us are very visual. So being able to see a picture of something goes, all right, I'm happy to give that a go without necessarily looking at the question, ingredients and going, oh, that sounds too complex. Um, so I've certainly been able to try a lot more by looking at the picture going, that looks really good, what's in it, and putting it together, rather than looking at a list of ingredients going, that doesn't sound great. So it certainly allows you to be a lot more creative and use up ingredients in your house. Um, as I said, Cookie Doo does come with the purchase of Thermix for six months, then it is $49 a year after that. For me personally, $49 a year is priceless in terms of being able to give me access to guided cooking. Um, due to my PTSD and that I really struggle being able to follow instructions, stick to the task without the guided cooking, um, especially having three kids. You met Logan a bit earlier who came to join us. Getting distracted is something that quite ha often happens. It doesn't happen with the Thermomix or it does happen with the Thermomix, but it will stay at that point. Again, if I get distracted and walk away, the Thermomix has an inbuilt timer, so it will shut down after 15 minutes. So there's no risk of it catching fire or overcooking or things being burnt on it because it doesn't continue to cook indefinitely like a stove does. So I think that's pretty much everything that we have covered for the TM6. So you're all ready to get started and get into your cooking. I really look forward to watching what you're cooking and hearing all your stories about the Thermomix and how it has transformed your lives. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out. I'm more than happy to help. Thank you so much for watching my delivery demonstration. Chat to you later.